Okay, this is gonna be an awkward fit for a Madonna film retrospective. I have to cover it because it's the best Madonna film, but Madonna doesn't have a lot of presence in it. And also, everyone's seen it. Everyone's seen it, like, multiple times and loves it and they quote from it and remember all the scenes. You know, there are girls that play baseball and that one girl slides in her skirt and tears up her leg and John Lovitz and then there's, there's no, no crying, crying in baseball. baseball. No crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball! The, the ugly one who can hit, and then Tom Hanks takes a piss for two straight minutes. <gasps> oh. You know it. And if you don't, Jesus, did you, did you not have TBS growing up? They used to play it pretty much every day. Actually, has this movie faded? I don't know, I'm getting old, but before you're Legally Blonde or your Mean Girls, this was like the chick flick that everyone knew, even if you weren't a chick. So, reviewing it is kind of like reviewing Star Wars, because everyone's so familiar with it. But is it actually any good? Everybody comes to Hollywood. They wanna make it in the neighborhood. We're members of the All American League. We come from cities near and far. We got Canadian Irish boys and sweet. We're all no black women though. That one's gonna have to wait a little bit. One step at a time. So, A League of Their Own is based on a real league that existed in the 40s and 50s, the All-American Girls Professional League. You know, the 40s, that was a time when a lot of stuff about women's roles changed, because all our men were out killing Nazis in a different Tom Hanks movie. So back home, the women had to pick up the slack doing stuff that men usually did, and in this case that also included satisfying our need to watch grown adults play a silly, meaningless game. Seriously, why do we watch sports? Baseball is what gets inside you. It's what lights you up supposed to be hard. The hard is what makes it great. I guess? I mean, it's hard to memorize all 649 Pokemon, but I wouldn't exactly call that great. But anyway, yeah, we want to see some baseball, and if we gotta have ladies doing it instead of the men, well, it'll have to do. So, it's a baseball movie, and it takes place in the 40s, so... Naturally, it's a little corny. Can't use her. She's great, why not? What's the problem? Oh, General Omar Bradley? Yeah. Oh, there's two strong resemblance. It's actually kind of really corny in parts. May our feet be swift. May our bats be mighty. May our balls be plentiful. Like the mean, drunk, angry, sarcastic, Ooh, edgy character is played by Tom Hanks. So yeah, I guess that's why I've always kind of held this movie at a bit of a distance. It's always struck me as a little obvious and easy. Education are leading to the masculinization of women with enormously dangerous consequences to the home, the children, and our country. Young girls plucked from their families are gathered at Harvey Field to see which one of them can be the most masculine. Oh yeah, well, take this outdated gender roles from 50 years ago. Girls can play ball! Batting fifth and playing left field, number 11, Sherman, Ellen Sue Gutland. Yeah, showed you. And sexism was never a problem again. Eh, that's not fair. If it was so obvious, they would have made that movie already, and they hadn't. Nor have they really made one since. Nowadays, our girl teams compete in a cappella competitions for some reason. And even in 1992, I remember girls in sports still being pretty controversial. There was all this uproar over Title IX, and it's not like women's pro leagues are thriving even now. Harvey and the other owners think they've made a mistake. Uh, they're talking about closing you down. What? Matter of fact, A League of Their Own is kind of structured weird for a sports movie because there's no real bad guy or rival team. There's no evil East Germans or Cobra Kai or giant cartoon aliens to beat or anything like that because the bad guys that the girls are trying to win the big game against is the crushing thumb of the patriarchy, which is not something a well-placed sacrifice bunt is going to do much about. So there's no real narrative drive to win the game because basically they're winning every second that they still exist. Now, I'm a soccer guy personally, and as an American soccer fan, yeah, I totally get that mentality. Mistake that gave Pedro Ribeiro a chance. It's okay, we lost, guys, because everyone's a winner because we got to put on an entertaining show for all the fans. Now I know this kind of mentality sounds lame. So, because there's nothing really on the line, the movie's more like a bunch of short vignettes without a real plot to link them up. John Lovitz makes a big entrance and then leaves 15 minutes into the movie. Goodbye. Wait, you're going? Oh, and here's Rosie O'Donnell's subplot. Doris, is this your boyfriend? 
The looks aren't the most important thing. That's right. The important thing is he's stupid, he's out of work, and he treats me bad. <laughs> then why? Why? What do you think? Because, you know, none of the other boys ever, uh, always made me feel like I was wrong, you know? I believed him, too, but not anymore, you know? I mean, look it. There's a lot of us. Don't give me that. And that's it! That's the entire arc. Subplot over. Madonna doesn't even get a subplot. She's just there to say something scandalous every five scenes or so. Haha, <laughs> she dirty talked a priest. I mean, her scenes are funny. What if at a key moment in the game, my, my uniform bursts open and, uh, oops, my bosoms come flying out. Now, that that might, might draw a crowd, right? <laughs> You think there were men in this country who ain't seen your bosoms? I mean, they're not four minutes of Tom Hanks peeing funny, but, you know, pretty funny. Granted, being shockingly scandalous in an old-school 40s kind of way is not exactly stretching for her. And it's funny to watch what kind of bullshit they had to put up with back then. First off, they have to wear those short skirts to show off their legs, even though those are ridiculous to play baseball in. Good thing female athletes don't have to put up with that any... Oh, yeah. Also, they have to go to charm school. Yeah, that's some bullshit. I'm guessing no male baseball player has ever had to do that. Which, honestly, maybe that wouldn't be a terrible idea. You ever tell you look like a penis with a little hat on? He does! He does look like a penis with a hat. What I was like to show up for the casting call of guy who looks like penis with hat. Now, technically, this is a Gina Davis movie, and it's the rivalry between her character, Dottie, and her sister, Kit, that gives the movie any forward momentum. Kit is jealous of Dottie because Dottie is always so great and better than Kit. You ever hear Dad introduce us to people? This is our daughter, Dottie. This is our other daughter, Dottie's sister. The thing is, Dottie is better than Kit in like every way because Kit's just not very good, not only as a player, but as a person. Finish it right here. I'll strike this turkey out. What do you think? She's done. She's throwing grapefruits up there. Blue! All I know is you could have backed me up today, instead of holding me back. You were sucking. Do, do you not understand why relief pictures exist? What are you not getting about this? <laughs> the movie would probably be better if Kit was likable in some way, but she's really not. She's a whiny brat. Such a whiny brat that she winds up traded to another team. The same one that Dottie's team plays in the finals. And right before that, Dottie also leaves the team because her man's home from the war. But she changed her mind and shows up for Game 7. So, see, it is still your normal sports movie. You look like shit. Don't you ever shave? We're gonna win. We're gonna win! No, you're going to lose. Directly because you just subbed in a player with demonstrated commitment issues. Sorry to break it to you. Yeah, like all sports movies, it comes down to one play. And Dottie loses the game by literally dropping the ball and Kit wins. You did what you had to do. You just beat me. You wanted it more than me. Yeah, no kidding. I always thought Dottie dropped the ball on purpose, but, um, rewatching. There's a lot of pain and shame in those eyes. Friends, it's all over. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Kit would have ripped the ball out of Dottie's fingers with her teeth if she'd had to. Even though Kit's not a very likable character, she's a necessary one because she's the only one to throw cold water on the yay sisterhood atmosphere of the movie. One of my favorite women's sports stories is about how Hope Solo, the American soccer star, has changed our entire preconceptions about women's sports by being a stupid drunken idiot with a shitty attitude and all her teammates hate her. But you know what? She's the best. So who gives a crap about being BFFs with her? It was just a goddamn win. So Kit wins because she's the only one who really needs it, and I guess she gets over her resentment because, yeah, a championship will definitely get you out of a more talented sibling's shadow. Ask Eli Manning. I'm not sure that's a satisfying ending because what Kit needed to learn was how to be a better loser and less of a shitty teammate, but yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, Walter, what do you say? All right, Ira. We'll stick with it. And for as cheesy as this movie can be, full of cheap girl power moments, I like how it doesn't really have any real big victories. Obviously we know the league isn't gonna last, and the league's best player quits after one season to go support her husband, and she doesn't even seem to really regret it, that's just what women did back then. Yeah, in the end they don't actually manage to turn the wheel of progress very far, but they definitely did something in a pretty tough environment, so you know, props to them. 
And like I said, not a lot of Madonna in this one. Her and Rosie O'Donnell are like the wisecracking, fat and skinny duo, you know, like the ones that pop up constantly in movies. And she gets one nice little monologue. What am I supposed to do, huh? Go back to taxi dancing? Ten cents or some slop can sweat gin all over me? And, uh, that's about it. This used to be my playground. Oh, right, yeah, that. Um, even in a well-written, eminently likable movie in which she gives a perfectly good performance, Madonna has to make sure that the film she's in sucks in at least one major way, and that is in her contribution to the soundtrack, This Used to Be My Playground, which stands a good chance of being the very worst song of her career. I'm drinking a salate, I get a double shot it, it goes into my body and you know I'm satisfied. Worse than that one. Worse than that one also. Look, the early 90s was a lot less enjoyable than people like to remember. Easy listening still ruled the world and Madonna was not immune to it. This song sucks. So it's the only Madonna song I can imagine being sung by Phil Collins or Michael Bolton. It's like a DJ at the end of the night trying to clear out the dance floor. Movie's over. Go home. So yeah, that was a league of their own. I'm, I'm glad to have that one out of the way. It was a little intimidating. And I hear some of you asking, what's with all the positivity lately? Aren't you going to get to more bad movies? Well, don't worry. After a few years of making movies that were not actually the worst thing in history, Madonna will be making a stunning return to form. The women hate me. They think I'm a whore. Men don't marry women like her. And the men see a cold, heartless bitch they can pay back for every chick that's ever blown them off in a bar. Okay, this is going to be an awkward fit for a Madonna film retrospective. I have to cover it because it's the best Madonna film, but Madonna doesn't have a lot of presence in it. And also, everyone's seen it. Everyone's seen it, like, multiple times and loves it and they quote from it and remember all the scenes. You know, there are girls that play baseball and that one girl slides in her skirt and tears up her leg and John Lovitz and then there's, there's no, no crying, crying in, in baseball. baseball. No crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball! The, the ugly one who can hit, and then Tom Hanks takes a piss for two straight minutes. <gasps> you know it. And if you don't, geez, did you, did you not have TBS growing up? They used to play it pretty much every day. Actually, has this movie faded? I don't know, I'm getting old, but before you're Legally Blonde or your Mean Girls, this was like the chick flick that everyone knew, even if you weren't a chick. So, reviewing it is kind of like reviewing Star Wars, because everyone's so familiar with it. But is it actually any good? Everybody comes to Hollywood. The wanna make it in the neighborhood. We're the members of the All American League. We come from cities near and far. We got Canadian Irish boys and sweet. We're all No black women though. That one's gonna have to wait a little bit. One step at a time. So, A League of Their Own is based on a real league that existed in the 40s and 50s, the All-American Girls Professional League. You know, the 40s, that was a time when a lot of stuff about women's roles changed, because all our men were out killing Nazis in a different Tom Hanks movie. So back home, the women had to pick up the slack doing stuff that men usually did, and in this case, that also included satisfying our need to watch grown adults play a silly, meaningless game. Seriously, why do we watch sports? Baseball is what gets inside you. It's what lights you up. Supposed to be hard. The hard is what makes it great. I guess. I mean, it's hard to memorize all 649 Pokemon, but I wouldn't exactly call that great. One of them can be the most masculine. Oh, yeah? Well, take this outdated gender roles from 50 years ago. Girls can play ball! Batting fifth and playing left field, number 11. I'm a ball player. Ellen Sue Gutland. Yeah, showed you. And sexism was never a problem again. Eh, that's not fair. If it was so obvious, they would have made that movie already, and they hadn't. Nor have they really made one since. Nowadays, our girl teams compete in a cappella competitions for some reason. And even in 1992, I remember girls in sports still being pretty controversial. There was all this uproar over Title IX, and it's not like women's pro leagues are thriving even now. Harvey and the other owners think they've made a mistake. Uh, 
They're talking about closing you down. What? Matter of fact, A League of Their Own is kind of structured weird for a sports movie because there's no real bad guy or rival team. There's no evil East Germans or Cobra Kai or giant cartoon aliens to beat or anything like that because the bad guys that the girls are trying to win the big game against is the crushing thumb of the page. But anyway, yeah, we want to see some baseball, and if we gotta have ladies doing it instead of men, well, it'll have to do. So, it's a baseball movie, and it takes place in the 40s, so... Naturally, it's a little corny. Can't use her. She's great, why not? What's the problem? You know General Omar Bradley? Yeah. Well, there's two strong resemblance. It's actually kind of really corny in parts. May our feet be swift. May our bats be mighty. May our balls be plentiful. Like the mean, drunk, angry, sarcastic, edgy character is played by Tom Hanks. So yeah, I guess that's why I've always kind of held this movie at a bit of a distance. It's always struck me as a little obvious and easy. Careers in higher education are leading to the masculinization of women. With enormously dangerous consequences to the home, the children, and our country. Young girls plucked from their families are gathered at Harvey Field to see which... Patriarchy, which is not something a well-placed sacrifice bunt is going to do much about. So there's no real narrative drive to win the game because basically they're winning every second that they still exist. I'm a soccer guy personally, and as an American soccer fan, yeah, I totally get that mentality. It's a mistake that gave Pedro Ribeiro a chance. It's okay, we lost, guys, because everyone's a winner because we got to put on an entertaining show for all the fans. Now, I know this kind of mentality sounds lame. So, because there's nothing really on the line, the movie's more like a bunch of short vignettes without a real plot to link them up. John Lovitz makes a big entrance and then leaves 15 minutes into the movie. Goodbye. Wait, you're going? Oh, and here's Rosie O'Donnell's subplot. Doris, is this your boyfriend? The looks aren't the most important thing. That's right, the important thing is he's stupid, he's out of work, and he treats me bad. <laughs> then why? Why? What do you think? Because, you know, none of the other boys ever, uh...